Okay, so this table um, was created with our community collaborator or co-researcher, Bo Sang Lee, um, who's also here, hello. <laughs> um, so some of you uh, may know him. So he has been so involved, um, engaged, and is such a crucial member of our research team. Um, so we developed this, um, this table together. Um, but if you have any feedback on this chart or feel like we're missing something or disagree with anything, um, please feel free to just interrupt or type in the chat. Um, we'd love to hear your feedback. Um, so it's quite challenging uh, making um, comparisons across cultures because there's so much variation and diversity even within a given culture. Um, but this chart is meant to just kind of make very general comparisons. Um, so when we're comparing the two cultures in terms of interpersonal style, so this is how individuals relate to each other. Um, Korean culture tends to be more, tends to be organized and structured more hierarchically. Um, so things like respect for elderly is highly valued um, in this culture. Um, it's also a very collectivistic culture. So there's this greater emphasis on the needs of the group um, rather than individual or personal needs or goals. Um, whereas in Canadian culture, it tends to be more egalitarian and individualistic. So there's greater emphasis on personal needs and goals over those of the group. Um, in terms of communication styles, um, so Koreans will tend to use more indirect and implicit language. Um, in a lot of East Asian cultures, lack of eye contact is seen as a sign of respect. Um, whereas in Canadian cultures, lack of eye contact contact would, might be interpreted as being rude. Um, Canadians tend to be more direct or forward um, and also explicit in their communication styles. Studies have also shown that um, there are differences um, in terms of views towards disability when comparing cultures. So in Korean culture and most, um, most Asian cultures, there's a lot of stigma surrounding um, individuals with um, disability. So studies have looked at lay theories of what causes disability in different cultures. Um, and this research has shown that in some East Asian cultures, many people believe that a child's disability is caused by things like poor parenting, um, poor prenatal practices, um, not recognizing the genetic component of most neurodevelopmental disabilities. Um, there's also this fatalistic view, uh, which is common in a lot of East Asian cultures. Um, there's a very literal meaning of disability, um, this view like they can't do anything, um, and there are no opportunities for improvement. Um, whereas Canadians, um, Arguably, they tend to be more accepting and inclusive of individuals um, with disability. And lastly, um, in terms of values, so individuals from Korean cultures um, tend to value interdependence. Um, this may have some basis in uh, Confucianism and Confucian values, such as filial piety, um, devotion to family, uh, group harmony, and again, that hierarchical structure. Um, on the other hand, uh, Canadian cultures, um, in Canadian cultures, individuality and autonomy seems to be more valued. Um, so independence is, is kind of the goal. Having children move out of the home and be independent um, is something that's valued. Okay, so um, our research questions for the current study was first, how do Korean immigrant families and Canadian families of children with ASD define family quality of life? And the second one was, what are the similarities and differences across families in their definitions of family quality of life? Um, so for the Korean, uh, so our participants in the study, um, the Korean sample included 13 Korean immigrant parents between the ages of 39 and 59, and their children between the ages of 6 and 33. Um, for the Canadian sample, there were 15 parents um, included uh, between the ages of 30 and 59, um, and the age range of their children was between 6 and 17.5 years. Um, so the Korean sample, the children were slightly older um, than the Canadian sample. So our methods. So we conducted, um, for the Korean families, um, I conducted um, some of the interviews along with Bo Sang. Um, and the interviews for Canadian families was done by Emily. 
And the interview question, which was the focus of, of this study, asked parents to define family quality of life. This was the very first question in the interview. Um, and again, the current study um, with the Korean families involved a community engagement approach. Um, so I'll talk about this in the next slide. Yep. Um, so community engagement is an approach or paradigm which recognizes the expertise of members that belong to the community being studied, so the autism community in this case. Um, it recognizes that these stakeholders, um, which can be um, individuals with autism, their parents, um, their caregivers, these individuals are in the best position to identify and set research priorities um, in this field. So this approach involves engaging or collaborating with members that belong to these communities in planning and implementing the study. Um, so community engagement can be used at any stage of the research, um, but for this study, this approach was used throughout um, in terms of planning the study, identifying the research question, recruitment, um, and implementing the study, doing the interviews um, with our parent partner. Um, and, and we'll and our parent partner was also involved in the analysis stage and identifying some themes and codes um, after interviews. Okay. okay, so now I'll just talk about what we found, our results. Um, so some themes that emerged from the interviews included acceptance from society, um, the importance of religion um, and respect. Um, all of these aspects were important in how families define their family quality of life. So things like acceptance from society, um, feeling a sense of belongings, um, not just in their communities, but in society um, as a whole, uh, religion, faith, um, spirituality, all of these things were central um, for many of the families that were interviewed um, in helping them achieve high family quality of life. Um, but also in terms of um, helping them come to terms with their uh, child's diagnosis and also respect, so being treated with respect, whether it was from professionals or service providers um, who interact with these families, um, this was also seen as important to this, um, to this group. Um, <clears throat> so for the Canadian families, initially, um, uh, you know, like what came up already today, uh, families spoke very generally about how access to support was was an extremely important component of how satisfied they felt with their own uh, family quality of life and then later elaborated on the sort of successes they had had and the and the considerable challenges they had encountered in this domain um, you know overall they spoke about how having good relationships with service providers really helped them to feel uh, supported and and help them to see that their child was making progress um, but they certainly also spoke a lot about how the sort of constant demands of being their child's service navigator was was very draining um, they shared about the importance of emotional well-being and how if family demands were eased sort of the overall family environment could be one uh, you know sort of characterized by more optimal emotional health and well-being. With regard to individual characteristics, family members described how um, the individual members' attributes sort of contributed to the overall family environment and quality of life. And finally, uh, families very frequently contextualized their own challenges in relation to what they saw other families going through. And I'll elaborate on all of these um, themes in, in some of the upcoming slides. Um, so I'll just quickly talk about some of the similarities. Um, so for both the Korean and the Canadian sample, um, both talked about the, the importance of um, sacrifice and personal sacrifice, whether it was career goals. Um, a lot of families from the Korean sample um, had to move to a completely like foreign country um, and had to leave behind sorry had to leave behind many families and, uh, and friends back home um, and also giving up certain lifestyles and hobbies um, to prioritize prioritize their family. Um, another thing, um, another similarity was in terms of um, family interactions. So mem members of, um, sorry, family members emphasize the importance of family harmony, um, quality of relationships between members. Um, these things were central in their definitions of family quality of life. Um, so both groups mentioned these things. <clears throat> 